So some of you may recall that a while back I posted a video on our home theater PC, our HTPC, and basically was talking about how the pump inside of the AIO had died, which was why we were seeing really high temperatures. So I swapped it out for a low profile cooler and everything was good. I even said that I would maybe upgrade it to a proper AIO again down the line, but things have changed. It's come to my attention that Wifey Sauce is not happy with our current HTPC situation and whatever Wifey Sauce says, goes. And, and she actually likes the case. The Evolve Shift that it's inside of she thinks is really nice looking, um, but unfortunately even though it's compact it's not small enough to fit inside of one of our entertainment center shelves, which is why it's positioned adjacent to the entertainment center on the floor. And she's not happy about that and the way it looks, and I totally agree with her. So today I'm going to be replacing that home theater PC with a system that we've already built very recently in fact. This is the, uh, the Xbox Series X, not console killer because that was sort of open for debate, but an alternative console PC uh, that was a compact small form factor build. It features an AMD Ryzen 5 1600 AF processor with six cores and 12 threads along with the Zotac RTX 2070 Super Mini. And while that's a really nice pairing of hardware capable of 1440p gaming and such, I'm going to be doing a bit more than just gaming with my home theater PC. So I'm going to be upgrading the system today in order to get it where it needs to be for my specific needs. Besides gaming, I needed to stream as well, primarily for VR, because right now the living room is the only room in the house that's really Really capable or, or ready for VR because it's got enough room, there's a lot of empty space, so whatever PC is connected to the TV in that room needs to be capable of streaming some VR games. In fact, I was just streaming Half-Life Alex the other day and I actually had to bring in a separate PC to stream that because our existing HTPC only has four cores and eight threads, which for its time was perfectly adequate for streaming, but multi-threaded performance has come a long way since then and higher core and thread count chips are much more accessible and much more affordable on mainstream desktop CPUs now than ever before. Now don't get me wrong here, the Ryzen 5 1600 AF is a really solid budget CPU for streaming and gaming. For $85, it's an incredible value, but this is not gonna be a casual streaming PC. This is gonna be used to stream to our YouTube channel, which you know potentially thousands of people will be viewing at a time. So I want something with a little bit more oomph, a little bit more power, something that I can really dig into and crank up the, the quality settings without you know sacrificing much performance. So for that, we are gonna be upgrading the CPU today to the AMD Ryzen 7 3700X. Eight cores, 16 threads, that glorious seven nanometer architecture on Zen 2, and it's, it's awesome. It's an awesome chip. You can still get it for roughly 300 bucks at the time of filming, which I think is a tremendous value for, for 16 threads. Of course, this little guy gets a bit warmer than our 1600 AF in here, so we're going to have to bump up our cooling solution as well, which is why we're going to be installing this Corsair H80i V2. This is a 120 millimeter liquid AIO. If you guys remember, the cooler that's already in here is the Noctua NH-L9A. Great little low profile cooler, but certainly not enough to handle something like the 3700X, unless you're doing some serious undervolting, which is going to compromise on some performance, which we're trying not to do here, hence the beefier liquid AIO. Corsair does include a pair of their 120 millimeter fans, but these are a little bit loud under load from my experience. And for an HTPC, you do want it to be a little quieter, especially if you're watching a movie with like a really quiet scene or something like that. You don't want to hear a bunch of fans in the background. So we're going to be swapping those out for these guys. These are the Noctua NHF12s. These are super quiet, absolutely fan freaking tastic fans, the industrial PPC 2000 RPM units. They also move a ton of air. There's a reason Noctua has set the bar when it comes to PC cooling in the industry. And I also love the fact that these are completely blacked out. No RGB whatsoever. In an HTPC, I don't want there to be lights. No bling, no bling. It's a distraction. This is gonna be centered right below the TV. I'm really glad we don't have to deal with that. It also means we don't have to deal with the whole mess of cables. We have a single four pin PWM cable coming off of each of these fans. Not a bunch of extra wiring for RGB that we have to deal with in this already compact chassis. So I really do think that these are some of the best fit fans for the job. Last but certainly not least, we are upgrading the GPU. And this is probably the most unnecessary upgrade that we're gonna be doing today, but uh, I will tell you sort of why, why I'm doing it, my rationale behind it. So like I said, we have the already fantastic Zotac RTX 2070 Super Mini. The cooler in PCB is only about 8.3 inches long as opposed to the usual 10 and a half to 11 inches on these GPUs, um, which is great. Gives you a bit of extra breathing room, some more room to work with, but this is gonna be an HTPC, which means it's gonna be connected to our LG OLED C9 TV, that's a 4K TV. So the system's gonna have to be able to handle 4K gaming to some degree. And yes, the 2070 Super certainly can in a lot of titles, especially if you crank the settings down. But by cranking it up a notch, we can probably squeeze a bit more performance and quality out of this system on the big screen. So we're gonna be upgrading the GPU to an RTX 2080 Super Founders Edition. And I'm not really concerned about the extra size or length of this card. In fact, this is actually one of the more compact cards for an RTX 2080 Super when you compare it to a lot of the add and board partner cards out there. But one concern 
concern that I do have is cooling or heat because these tend to get a little bit warmer, these Founders Edition cards, especially when you get to the higher end GPUs, they tend to max out at around 83 degrees Celsius and then the fans ramp up and it gets a bit noisier, which is obviously not great for an HTPC. So we're gonna try our hand at some undervolting today. We're just gonna try a really easy method later and see how it goes. But I think overall this card's just gonna give us that extra bit of confidence we need for 4K gaming. So that's pretty much what we're doing today. Partially gutting the system, making some hardware upgrades and getting this thing ready to be our full-time home theater PC. Should be pretty fun. I also wanna take a look at before and after numbers. So we'll look at performance, acoustics and temperatures before and after the upgrades to see if it was all worth it. Uh, we got a lot to do. Let's get started. This video was brought to you by the EVGA RTX 2060 KO. The card features 6 gigs of GDDR6 memory, a quiet dual fan design, and full metal backplate for added rigidity. Fast yet affordable, the RTX 2060 KO is built on Nvidia's Turing architecture, allowing users to experience RTX on for next level realism in games. Click on the link below to learn more. <laughs> And voila, the upgrades are complete. We're looking really good and uh, it's super quiet. It's idling right now. It just finished a 3D Mark test, so it, it might not be as quiet as it could possibly be because it's probably still cooling down the components, but just, just listen, you can, you can barely hear it. Super quiet, very happy about that. We'll do a proper sound test in just a bit though. Uh, I also want to mention that as you probably saw in the little caption that I put in the video, that I was unable to get both of the Noctua fans on that radiator. There just wasn't enough clearance. We were running into the motherboard at that point and I just really didn't have a choice but to only use one fan. Fortunately, temperatures are still looking good. We'll take a closer look at those in just a moment as well. I want to also point out that fan. This is actually the same fan that comes along with their L9A or L9I coolers, the low profile ones that I was mentioning earlier. Fortunately, two of the ventilation holes of the case happen to line up perfectly with the opposite corners of the fan here. Uh, these ones did not line up, however, so I only have two screws that I was able to thread through and put nuts on the other side to hold it in place, but it's fine. There's no rattling or vibration or anything, and the fan seems pretty secure to that side of the chassis. You can see I mounted it as an exhaust, so it actually carries heat away from the graphics card. Uh, as we have intake, fresh intake coming in through the front of the case, it's gonna get warmed up a little bit as it passes through the radiator um, when the CPU is under load. And uh, I just didn't wanna have a little hot spot around our GPU. So it's gonna be ejected out right here, which is, uh, which is lovely. Temperatures are, are, are definitely showing that it is effective the way that it's all set up because after half an hour of gaming, the 3700X didn't go past 70 degrees Celsius, which is pretty awesome considering that we were getting close to 80C uh, with the 1600 AF and that low profile knock to a cooler. So the AIO is definitely doing its job. I'm very happy that despite adding two cores and four threads to the system, we're staying roughly 10 degrees cooler overall, which is awesome. The GPU is actually a little warm, as I suspected. Uh, 82 degrees Celsius is the hottest it got after that same half an hour run. So that brings us to undervolting. So to undervolt our GPU, we're gonna use MSI Afterburner. And what you wanna do first is click on this little graph icon, or you can hit Control F. That brings up your voltage and frequency plot chart. So this is our graphics card's curve, more or less. This is what we're operating at. And we wanna click OC Scanner from here in the corner, which looks like it opens up a window underneath it. So move that to the side. And we're gonna hit Scan. And what OC Scanner does is it basically gives you the highest possible overclock that is still stable. It's gonna take anywhere from five to 10 minutes, depending. So we're just gonna let it do its thing and uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, OC scanner is finished, so we can go ahead and close this window, bring this back to the center, and we wanna put a load on our GPU now, so I'm gonna open up Unige in Heaven. All right, so we've got all the relevant information up here now, and uh, if you take a look at our curve after we've done the OC scanner, it's kinda of hard to see, but you'll see this dotted line going across and uh, vertically, 
um, which kind of pinpoints a point on your graph. Um, and if you click it, it'll tell you the exact value. So it's 1031 millivolts and 1935 megahertz. These are the values that our GPU is running at at stock and serves as more or less a jumping off point as we go about undervolting. Um, undervolting, the whole process can be a bit tedious. So I'm just gonna take a shot in the dark here to save time. I'm gonna try 950 millivolts. Let's see how that goes. 950 millivolts, and as I click that, you can see that we're gonna be running at 1860 megahertz at that voltage. So what I'm gonna do now is basically click and drag this little cube or point up to 1935, which again, was where our stock frequency was at. We'll do 1932, it's not letting me go straight to 35. So now our point's at 950 millivolts and 1932 megahertz. I'm gonna hit L to lock it in. Now before I hit apply in MSI Afterburner, I want you guys to take a look at some of the values here. Our GPU is hovering around 80C. Okay, it's pretty warm. Again, V-Core is at 1.031 volts. And our GPU power draw is drawing quite a bit of power, 225 watts thereabouts. All right, so kind of keep these numbers in mind. And now we'll click apply. And you can see right off the bat, you can see our curve has flattened out, our plateau has been lowered, and we're now running at these new parameters that we've just set for our voltage and frequency. And if you look over here now, our V-Core is 0 0.950 volts, whereas before it was over one volt and our GPU power draw has come down significantly from around 225 to around 100, and, uh, it's, it's in the 180s. But that's, that's pretty significant, which also leads us to much cooler temperatures. We've dropped five degrees, just like that. And remember, this was just sort of a shot in the dark. I kind of just randomly picked 950 millivolts. With more time and testing, I can probably get this down even further, which would improve these numbers over here even more. So you can really play around with this and, uh, and figure out the optimal settings for your particular graphics card. I'm just gonna call it right here at 925 and try to run a 3D Mark Fire Strike test, see if we can get through that, see if, uh, if this is a stable enough voltage. Uh, and if it is, we'll, we'll compare the score there with, uh, with our previous score before we started undervolting. All right, the results are in. So this is my original Fire Strike score before we started undervolting anything. I got a score of 23,604 overall and a graphic score of 27,703. After undervolting, we got a score of 21,398 and a graphic score of 26,313. If you do the math, we saw roughly a 10% performance bump without undervolting, which is not a significant amount. I mean, in a real world scenario, you're hardly gonna notice that. And bear in mind that these settings were dialed in for my undervolt, they were pretty much random. I took a shot in the dark with the settings and this is what came out. So imagine if I had actually spent the time and gone through the proper process to dial in a more serious undervolt, this number would probably look even better. It's also worth noting that compared to the original system with the Ryzen 1600 AF, and RTX 2070 Super, our new upgraded rig is actually outperforming it by roughly 25% in 3D Mark Fire Strike, and that's while undervolted. Uh, without undervolting, just stock, the new system is outperforming it by 38%. So the system is definitely a lot more powerful than it used to be, but why don't we take a look at our temperatures? You can see that I actually have an instance of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order running in the background. Um, it's been going for a little longer than I would have liked it to. I, I think it's running for like 40 minutes now. It's supposed to be a 30 minute test. This is the same test that I used on uh, the GPU before we started undervolting. And remember it was getting up to 82C at its hottest, and now we're hovering around 75, 76C. And again, this has been running 10 minutes longer than the previous test. So we're actually giving the stock GPU an unfair advantage here. But you can see we still shaved off up to seven degrees Celsius just from undervolting, which is fantastic considering our frame rate really hasn't dropped much uh, from beforehand and everything is looking really good, especially when you consider that the system is running a bit quieter now because the fans don't need to ramp up as much because the GPU is not getting as hot. It's a nice chain reaction where we get to see more than just the temperatures improve. Uh, and it definitely showcases all the various benefits of undervolting. So on that note, why don't we go ahead and do a little sound test before we wrap things up. All right, we're pretty much ready to take this guy into the living room. Put him in his new home. Honey, it's done. I don't want to be on camera. HTPC's done. I don't want to be on camera. Okay, that's fine, but the HTPC's done. Why? 
Why, why did I even build this? She doesn't even care. All right. All right, sorry, buddy. Your time's up. Your day's finally come. <laughs> Sorry, Xbox. We don't need you anymore. Actually, we never really needed you. I don't know why I bought you. All right, the new HTPC is purring along like a champ. It's pretty much handling everything I throw at it, and it's still staying pretty cool despite being in its little cubby space in our entertainment center, but I couldn't be happier with how this turned out. So you guys let me know what you think of the system down below, and feel free to toss a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed for more tech content on the way, and I'll see you guys in the next video.